Hello, and congratulations to the Cheney High School Class of 2021. My name is Clarence Howe, and I'm also a very proud Cheney Cowboy. I graduated with the best class in Cheney High School history, the class of 2005. You and your families should be very proud of your accomplishments thus far. I would encourage you to give them a hug for helping you to get to this point. I would also encourage you to hug or to elbow bump your siblings, your administrators, your friends, and your teachers because they've also had a vested interest to get you to this moment. Just in the last 30 seconds, I'm sure you could visualize several people who have played a part in your success thus far. Each time you reach this goal or you reach a goal in life, I would encourage you to go through this exercise and to think about those who helped you to get there. I would also encourage you to reach out to them to share your gratitude. Don't take those who care about you for granted. There's a popular term, <laughs> no, a popular myth, and I'm sure we've all heard it at some point in our lives, at some point in our lives. This idea of someone being self-made. As I grow older, the more I despise this myth. I can stand before you today and tell you with complete certainty that the idea of someone being self-made is indeed false. There is no such thing as a self-made success story. The reality is, is that it takes a village to raise a child. And I'm a product of this system. I'm here before you today because of my village. I've been able to achieve some truly amazing things because of them collectively. There are nearly 500 people that have played a major role in my story. Mentoring, listening, coaching, encouraging, teaching, and nurturing me so that, so that I could be all that I was called to be. This village philosophy is how every one of you and me included can be successful. And this is how we can ensure that those around us are successful as well. Nobody wins when only you win. I'll say it again. Nobody wins when only you win. The best strategy that we have to see ourselves out of the various crises that we face today is this concept of community. We have to develop a mindset that leads us to build with others, for others, and not solely for ourselves. We have to learn from the events in history, and more importantly, we have to use history to do better. It's our job to pick up the baton from the generation before us and to ready the table for those coming after us. It's up to us to dream and to build the world that we want to live in, in the world we want our children to live in, in the world we want their children to live in. This philosophy of community will be at the cornerstone of my message today. I won't be before you long, but there are four challenges, four challenges that I would like to leave you with as you navigate away from the refuge of this institution. The first is to reach out to those coming alongside you and to reach back to those coming after you. Sankofa, the African proverb of Sankofa translates to reach back. Sankofa is illustrated as a bird reaching for an egg on its back. This gesture symbolizes an older, wiser bird carrying and nurturing an unborn bird. As you reach one major plateau after another in life, reach out and reach back. Don't wait until you reach a certain age obtain a certain certification or qualification. 
an economic, a, a certain economic or social status, your life experience, your thoughts, your ideas, your work ethic, your passion, and your story have value right now. A combination of these nouns has the power to change your reality and the reality of those around you. There is something great that lives inside of us, but we just have to be willing to commit to venture deep, deep inside ourselves in order to unlock our potential. This lifelong voyage to unlock our potential is a humbling one. At times this journey can be lonely, uncertain, unforgiving, and downright scary. But when you experience a breakthrough, you feel a tremendous amount of joy, fulfillment, pride, and a hunger for more. In my journey, I found myself, I found myself lost, confused, and unsure if I was going in the right direction or even doing the right thing. Each time I found myself venturing down this path, someone from my village was there to reach out, reach back, and to lift me up. Through a hug, a pickup game of basketball, a road trip to a new place, a barbecue at their home, a haircut, retail therapy at the mall, or an encouraging word. One of the most profound messages that I ever heard was from my track coach at Cheney. Don't be afraid to be great. I'd like for you all to think about that for a second. Don't be afraid to be great. I'll even remix it for you. Don't be afraid to achieve greatness. This simple phrase opened Pandora's box in my life and has propelled me to always, always strive for greatness in whatever I do. This is my second challenge for you today. In all you do, don't be afraid to be great. What does greatness look like for each and every one of you? It's a great question. A great question that only you can define and that only you can answer. Only you have the power and the agency to define what success looks like in your life. I'll say it again. Only you have the power and the agency to define what success looks like in your life. Don't let someone else define success for you. Those around us, they can only aid us on this journey but it's up to us to own the desires of our hearts. If you do not define success, the world will do it for you. If you do not define what success means and looks like for you, you'll find yourself lost in the midst of a never ending battle with the internet. And it's unrealistic, unsustainable, unattainable, and immoral standards set by people who only care about themselves. The internet and social media have created a world of falsehoods, fueled by a culture of shorts, short videos, ticks and talks, hacks, and this idea of instant success. On Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook, algorithms feed us and flash images of luxury, of leisure, and abundance day in and day out. The sentiment is oftentimes, just follow what I did and you can be here too. It also implies a straight and narrow path to their version of success. Or that there are shortcuts that can achieve, that can help you to achieve anything. This subliminal or conscious messaging is both dangerous and completely false. I'm here today to tell you that there are no shortcuts in life. This is my third challenge for you today. Do not believe in or fall into the trap that there are shortcuts. Anything great or anything worth having in life will take your heart, 
your mind, your hands, and most importantly, it will take your time. Here's an example. Let's look at the life story of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If we follow his life through the lens of popular media, his story is summarized to his I have a dream speech and to his assassination. But his life, his life was much, much deeper than this. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was the son of a Baptist preacher who succeeded his father-in-law as pastor of one of the most prestigious churches in the city of Atlanta. He was groomed from a young age to follow in his father's footsteps. His village included scholars, clergy, community leaders, thinkers, and doers. And at the tender age of 15, he was enrolled at Morehouse College. Upon graduation, he went on a seminary at Crozier Theological Seminary Institute in Chester, Pennsylvania. After receiving his master's degree, by the age of 26, he went on to achieve his doctorate from Boston University. Upon graduation, he moved to Montgomery, Alabama, where he became the pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. And in this moment, Dr. King was ushered into the fight for civil rights. He was again surrounded by some of the best and brightest men and women of that generation, including organizers, st strategists, educators, actors, singers, and the top influencers from across the country. They poured into him so that he could become the spokesperson for the civil rights movement and to help to connect the dots to freedom. His journey and those in his village are responsible for us being able to attend the schools we attend, to vote, and to have a chance at having a future. There are two purposes for the story. First is to highlight his life's work, his village, and the significance in the outcome of his life story. The second is to emphasize that there are no shortcuts to achieving anything great. Social media success is like an iceberg. They only show us what's above the surface, the tip of the iceberg. But in reality, 90% of the iceberg, 90% of the surface of an iceberg happens to be below the sea level. Don't let the 10% dictate how you approach the 90%. My fourth and final challenge is the most significant, and of course, it's the most difficult. To practice radical love. Radical love can take on many forms and can have many meanings. The idea of radical love that we'll explore today is a philosophy rooted in loving each other. Loving each other in both our words as well as in our actions, no matter the circumstances. It takes a special kind of inner peace, an extreme amount of self-control, and a supernatural amount of patience to be able to deploy this philosophy in our everyday lives. I would not do this occasion in the space justice to not address the obvious. On the other side of those doors of Cheney High School, the world is a crazy and unforgiving place. Even with looking beyond the challenges of COVID-19, we, and I'm putting the emphasis on we, we're dealing with racism, with mass incarceration, with apartheid, and with classism, just to name a few. There's a lot of darkness on the other side of those doors, but there are also pockets of light. We all have the power of choice, and we can choose to use this power and this authority to move toward darkness or to move toward light. It's up to us to decide where we go. Today, I encourage you to move toward light. Quoting the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Choosing to express love in the face of hate is powerful. Choosing to stand up for justice in a world full of injustice is powerful. Choosing to give your time, your talent, or your money to someone in need is powerful. Choosing to reach out 
and to reach back to others is powerful. Choosing to be great for yourself and for your community or for your village is powerful. Choosing not to believe or to take shortcuts is powerful. Choosing to love your neighbor radically is powerful. Choosing to do all of these things every day is not only powerful, but it's life changing. Not only for you, but for those who we dwell in the world with together. I challenge you all to be life changing. I thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. It was truly an honor to be in your company. Thank you. God bless you. And once a cowboy, always a cowboy.